Okay, campers, rise and shine, and don't forget your booty because it's cold out there today. It's cold out there every day. Well, put your little hands in mine. The ribs beat the cardo. Doc Lee's podcasting bees. I do apologize for Doc Ellie doing this. Along he, with very, very <laughs> Professor John Gatto, the guy who is a gentleman and a scholar for choosing correctly. I was just trying to be the, like the Sultan of Squat. I mean, ah. <sighs> He said, sometimes you just have to take a chance on a team, and that's what I did. And the Los Angeles Rams clipped the wings off the Cardinals in the state of Arizona, shocking everyone. And waving goodbye. Yeah, he did it. I mean, I thought the Cardinals would pull it off, um, but, you know, hey. Things happen. It happens. Uh, so the Rams win 30 to 23. Um, but that's not the end. reason why Doc is happy, though. Of course. Of course not. Um, the standings change, in which, you know, honestly, I would have thought that the Bucks would have catapulted up to number one since we beat those Green Bay Packers. Um, but we go up to number two. Mm-hmm. Packers go up to number one. Um, yeah, I think it's because of the division record. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's all good. It is all good. And the conference record, too. Yeah. Uh, but we're 10 and 3. They're 10 and 3. Yeah, we're all 10 and 3. Um, NFC is definitely shaping up. Um, no, it's not. Gotta... No one's really. The... So here's the thing, folks. So last night, for those that don't understand the implications outside of Doc's Buccaneers now being number two. If the Cardinals was to win this game yesterday, they would have clinched their playoff berth. Mm -hmm. And they blew it all away. Yeah, they did. It was kind of a weird game. Um, Kyler, this is exactly what happened last year when Doc was, you know, in the, you know, uh, fantasy football championship and, you know, he needed Kyler Murray to have a great game. I thought it was Aaron Kyler Jones that, that hurt you. No, it was it was a little Kyler Murray also. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it was it was Kyler first, and then it was Aaron Jones. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's how I remember it. It was Kyler Murray first, then it was Aaron Jones. Um, but I think Kyler Murray did pretty good, except for the picks. Uh, he was running for his life out there. The Rams did a great job. Uh, trying to keep him into the pocket. Occasionally, they um, they let him slip out a few times. But yeah, I mean, it's you can't do it the whole game. But the fact that, yeah. they, that they was able to do that for a good chunk of the game and essentially lock him up, like mm-hmm. that's impressive. Even though he still had 383 yards throwing and two, he did no. <laughs> but but he had no touchdowns though. Like, no, no, no touchdowns. They the even though they were missing some of their key stars on the defense. The Rams had a plan uh, to not let them beat them over the top, in which they got beat once or twice, but they didn't give up the touchdown, like you nope. said. Um, I did see, you know, Nuke, you know, he was targeted 12 times. Uh, the defensive backs, the young defensive backs for the Rams really stepped up and played fantastic yes. football. Yes. Um, that's that's without... Um... Jalen Ramsey playing due to yeah. uh, Corona Chan. Wow. Wow. That's wow. actually what people are calling it now, Corona Chan. They're, they're calling it Corona Chan. Wow. But Darius Williams played a fantastic game <laughs> um, uh, against Nuke last night. And um, shout out to the Rams. I mean, they did it. They, they helped the Bucks move up the line and um, it's they, the only time that you ever hear Doc get this hype about the Los Angeles Rams this season. 
I mean, Matthew Stafford, I mean, I, I said I couldn't make any EFL jokes, but he did go 23 for 30, which is pretty close to EFL. Uh, it would have been 26 for 30 uh, for the EFL because they don't miss. Yeah. Um, 27, three did, touchdowns. He didn't, he didn't throw a pick. Yeah, he, he didn't. Um, he almost did a couple times, but you know, he almost took a couple say, sacks that I wouldn't almost have. Almost doesn't mean that they actually, he actually threw him, though. True. A couple sacks he, he took that I wasn't too happy with, but yeah, ultimately a pretty good game. Um, but let's go through these other games that happened really quickly here. We won't go too far into them. Um, we had the Dallas Cowboys beating up on the Washington Redskins, 27 to 20. Uh, this score doesn't really reflect. I mean, the Cowboys are pretty dominant early. Uh, mm-hmm. They were all over Heineken. It was just like they. And they then Heineken a, got hurt. Right. The they wanted. Too, a, they wanted a full cooler worth of Heineken. A full cooler. That was and good. They that was that devoured and quenched their thirst. On yep. Heineken, Micah Parsons trying to solidify himself as the defensive rookie of the year, and some are saying, saying even the, the defensive best, MVP. Yeah, the as best well. defensive player. I mean, remember when people was talking about Diggs at the beginning of the season? I mean, he's still up there. I mean, I think that helps. I think having Diggs helps Parsons uh, because obviously that's kind of shutting down one half of the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, mm-hmm. Then you get the Tennessee Titans beating the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trouble in paradise there. They don't know what they're going to do with Urban Meyer. Um, he said usually just, when there's an we'll, issue. We'll just, we'll just let the drama unfold by yeah. itself. It yeah. does, we all know what's going to happen, but it's a matter of when, not if. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Um, like I said, for me, coming into a new team, sometimes you have to let it, you have to let it burn a little bit. You have to see what's going on. Uh, what pieces need to be, you know, trimmed off. But sometimes you have to let it burn off. And uh, this might be his opportunity uh, to see, like, hey, what needs to be resolved. Uh, so we'll see. I think they'll yeah, but, give him another but, year. But that's if, that's if, like, it's the players, though. It's not even the players. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Because, honestly, the you know, because the team stinks, there's a hyper focus on Urban uh, because of, of his – you know, it's like anything else that's, you know, high, uh, high praised and, you know, like overhyped, right? Urban is kind of overhyped as being this great coach. Now he's here in the NFL. And I don't think they fire him after one year. The Jaguars weren't a team that you would come to and think like, hey, he's going to be a turnaround in one year. He's got to fix a whole losing culture. So they blew it, by the way. So, you know, a couple of years ago, they, they blew it. They were. They were in the AFC, you know, that division. Was that AFC West? No, it's the AFC South. South. Yeah. They were in that division. They were competing, right? And then they, they blew it up for some reason. They started letting people go. It was very weird. So they set themselves back. Jacksonville did this to Jacksonville. Uh, but Seattle beat Houston, you know, um, trying to stay in the, you know, NFC they West need a lot conversation. Of help. They yeah, need a lot of help. That's okay. Uh, the Chiefs, I, I think you said they were going to score a lot of touchdowns versus the Raiders. I, I did say that. That that they did. Uh, they scored the bleep out of the Raiders. Uh, the Jets. This is the most college level of scores, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Same with the New Orleans Saints and the Jets. Uh, the Jets can't get on the board, man. I mean, nope. they just can't get on the board. Um, I, and that's not Salah's specialty, you know, so they'll have to figure that out uh, moving forward. Uh, the Falcons beat the Panthers. I think you chose the Falcons, I which did. is a, a beastly move by you. Um, and you also chose the Browns over Baltimore, who lost Lamar. I don't think they've said for how long just yet. They're going to um, try to force him to play, and that's going to – I I'm getting uh, RG Duke flatbacks. Yeah, and it, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't <laughs> happen. Uh, the Chargers beat the Giants. Well, at least the Giants scored 21 points. Um, I can give this them credit. Um, but, you know, Herbert with they're, the They're finally maturation. getting some steam, especially that defense, yeah. which is, you know, one of their biggest black guys throughout the season is the fact mm-hmm. that their defense wasn't that good and they couldn't get off the field. But these yeah. past couple of weeks, they've been able to do that. 
and let's see if they can generate that for them to clinch a playoff berth. Very true. Um, and Herbert threw some great passes. I think I was questioning and wondering whether he would be able to work with, you know, the receivers lower on the depth chart. Mm -hmm. um, but he went out there and showed that he could not only do it, uh, but, but he could do it effectively. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just took some of those uh, EFL receivers and, and really made it happen. On wow. the Giants side, they did start Mike Glennon, which I thought was a mistake. Um, I thought they should have went with either Riley Dixon or Jake Fromm. You know, I thought, you know, it's time. Mike Lennon, he's a vet, sure, but I think it would have been good to see the young guys. I think if they made a mistake, it was that. Not saying he had a bad game, but I want to see the young guys. You yeah, know, like like the season's the already guys. pretty much forfeited. Yeah. Secure, like, you know, two top five picks. Like, right. sometimes you just got to see what the young guys got. Let's see what they can do. And, and, Let's and determine, see what they can do. And determine whether or not they want to either try to be like the Jets and keep drafting quarterbacks and ruining their lives or actually building towards the future. Yep, I said that, Jets fans. Come at me. And the Detroit Lions lose to the <laughs> Denver Broncos, uh, who uh, yeah. celebrated the life of Demarius Thomas, you know, yes. taking the field with 10 players, which is very awesome, and then coming out with the W. Yeah, people were kind of, I mean, of course, you know, we as the internet, people like to be negative about everything. And, you know, they try to poke negativity towards their honoring of Demarius Thomas. But I thought it was a nice, mm -hmm. a nice gesture by them. Um, also, big shout outs to the Lions, too, for declining of course. The penalty as well. Too. You have to decline the penalty. You have to. That would have been gutless and spineless. Wait, uh, it, it reminds me of that one uh, head coach you used to have who used to play, who used to coach Rutgers. Oh, Shiano. Yes. <laughs> like, he would have accepted that penalty. Like, we're not, you, got, you can't just kneel the ball and think we're just going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the San Francisco 49ers beat the Cincinnati Bengals in overtime 26 to 30. Yeah. Uh, they, were, they were winning pretty mildly. They were winning pretty convincingly throughout the game. And then, you know, they kind of, let Cincinnati back into it. Yep. Um, Cincinnati's not a slouch. I mean, I hate that they lost this game. I think we joked both and it, it, them. It could have been a winnable game, of course. Um, the Bengals are definitely a second-half team, but right. it's just like I was saying about the Ravens. You can't make your resume all about coming back, you know, oh, in the God. back end of the game because it nope. will hurt. And don't talk about coming back because I mean, that's exactly what happened in Buffalo and uh, in Tampa. Uh, Tampa was winning, you know, all game. And, you know, um, I think a lot of people kept saying that it was over. And, you know, Tampa Bay let, let off the gas just a little bit, uh, just a little bit, um, settling for field goals when they should have, you know, tried to punch it in. And, um, you know, a walk-off touchdown gave the Bucks the lead uh, and the win, Pyramid. Uh, it was the win. Yeah, it was the win. Yeah, for the win, 33-27. Uh, Tampa, uh, Tom Brady throws a 700 touchdown. Um, Doc Leeser can't be uh, any ple more pleased with the way Tampa Bay handled themselves. Congrats, Doc. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, they could have won. They could have. They could have won more. They could have. I mean, they should have won more, but um, they just couldn't stop. Josh Allen, who shows that he can still compete, is just it, it's not, some it's not reason. whether or not he could compete. That's the issue. It's everything else around him. Well, around outside of him and Stephon Diggs, mm -hmm. you know, offensive line. I've been talking about that for weeks, and it keep wearing his ugly head. Their lack of mm -hmm. run game is going to well, that was on them. Yes. That was on them. Yes. Like I said, other teams tried it. I mean, at least you try it. Um, but, and I mean, I like the sweeps that they tried with Allen. I probably would have just switched to Wildcat maybe if they are going to do that. I was going to say that. Like, might as well try something else to try to, mm -hmm. you know, not have him running through the tackles every single time they're trying to do a run play. Uh, but big right. shout-outs to uh, Leonard Fournette, another 100-yard game for him. That was a big run, too. Those counter plays are so sexy. Yep. Um, of uh, course, another big shout out to Chris Godwin, who is now, uh, who just eclipsed 1,000 yards for the season. So make, yeah. Mike Evans is next for the next game. I, 
I don't know. I mean, Chris benefits because he is a great screen player, like a great screen player. And that's the only reason I think that, you know, he gets a lot of the, the catches. Because you think about it, he's taking a lot of those catches that Antonio Brown, Brown and, be getting. Yep. you know. Um, which is, I mean, I would like is, to see some of the other young which guys is, which get them. It's crazy because your team had the opportunity and probably still can to have 3,000 yard receivers this year. Yeah, yeah. You said Gronk uh, would be the, the next. And I, I mean, I don't know. You mentioned how much Leonard Fournette had, but I, I can't remember what you said. I was talking about his rushing. Rushing. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think Brady will find a way. But Doc, what is the yeah. next game? Uh, we, in the last game, obviously, <laughs> ownership was at stake here, <laughs> right? Actually, so what was on the line, folks out there, was more <laughs> shares of the Bears franchise, right? Um, you know, more shares, um, maybe you know, a company car, okay. a parking spot. This this game. Folks, was called a margin call. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, you know, and, maybe a share and, into their local pizzeria. You know, those kind of yikes. things. Um, Green Bay Packers, you know, playing against the Chicago Bears. I mean, the Bears took it personal. At least, at least they took it personal. Um, they they scored thirty like, points. I feel like the the Packers special team is really the story of this entire game. I mean, holy <laughs> crap. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad, but uh, the Packers win forty-five to thirty. That would have been fantastic if the Bears could have beat the Packers, then we'd be number one. This is true. But that didn't happen. So nope. Budge them. Um, so <laughs> after those games, um, you know, obviously we had the power rankings this morning. Um, Wait, are we which... doing that today or are we doing that tomorrow? You know what? We can save it for tomorrow. Yeah, I thought we were going to do it tomorrow. We can. We can definitely save it for tomorrow because you know the one thing that we didn't do yesterday? What's that? We did not talk about the NCAA Heisman. No, we did not. And we do apologize for that. But I think yes. there's so much more stuff happening. That there's a lot going on. Yes, it, it kind of yeah. didn't help us. Yeah, I mean, this weekend was about streaks. I mean, the Bills extending their streak of losing to the Bucks, which was fantastic. Um, you had, you know, the Rockets ending their streak and then losing again, right? Then winning again. Yep. Right, that streak. Amanda Nunez's streak of winning you know, was over. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another streak that I just can't even Dustin remember. Boyer also lost. Yeah. Was, was he? On, was he? A, was he? On, I thought he lost before though. Was he streaking? I don't think he was streaking though. Yeah, he was streaking. Was he streaking? Okay, Heisman <laughs> winner for twenty twenty one. Bryce Young from Alabama, which I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, he had some really bad games in there, man. Right? I mean, he had some very underwhelming games. Okay, that's a better way to put it, I guess. But <laughs> based on the, but based on the votes, and this is I'm looking at Sporting News. Uh, looks like it was him in a landslide. Uh, he had twenty. Yeah, it was points. this. This was his Heisman to lose. I mean, and we yeah. use that expression a lot, but like this was his Heisman to lose. I do like how they have a defensive end at number two. I think that's pretty awesome. Even having a linebacker at five is uh, is pretty sweet. It's not all mm-hmm. quarterbacks, but obviously, you know, the big ticketed item, Kenny Pickett with the fake slide, right? We, you know, we, we didn't talk about that either. <laughs> oh, we uh, did. The fake slide. Oh, we did? We, okay, we did, the fake we slide did, but, will be but, but what we didn't talk about was it's now banned. Banned, it would yeah. now be uh, uh, called dead if someone tried to fix slide. Because that was really, it was really good, Mr. Pickett. Really, really good. But I'm glad they nipped that in the bud. I'm glad they were able to pick that up and throw it away. 
I'll let that one slide too. That uh, that fake slide was very young at heart. <laughs> okay, now now he's getting that warning, folks. He's he's getting that yellow <laughs> card right now. <laughs> uh, but but Bryce Young, um, you know, shout out to Bryce Young. You know, leading Alabama. You know, although who, they had who that also one won loss. the Davy O'Brien Award too as an FY uh, and the Maxwell Award. <laughs> And the most important part is that he's just a sophomore. Yep. Uh, just a sophomore. So that's pretty awesome. Um, uh, you know, it's it's interesting to see, you know, Alabama goes back to back. Yeah. Uh, Devontae Smith, who won last year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's amazing, you know, to see what Nick Saban does every year, which is why, you know, you got me the books, right? Yes. Oh, you got yeah, books. Doc. What other, what you, you talk about the Nick Saban books? I mean, you got some other books too. What did you get? So I mean, we're about to start a, a Aaron Rodgers book club. Best thing happening right now for Doc. Wow. So I have in my hand a book entitled Belichick by Ian O'Connor. There's another book. Here. I love the book slap afterwards, folks. <laughs> It's better to be feared. No, excuse me. It's better to be feared. Okay, I was like, I don't know, why I I don't know what kind of book that is. I don't think I want to read that. Seth Wickersham. And then I have um, Mr. Lombardi's book on the gridiron genius, uh, which is good. Uh, so far, so good. I first finished the first chapter. I was working on the second chapter. Um, he's talking about building a culture with uh, Steve Walsh. I think it is that Steve Walsh. Yeah, Steve Walsh uh, for the 49ers. Uh, so I didn't even realize that Lombardi's been around that long, but um, he definitely is. <laughs> but so far, so good, man. You know, um, you know, I appreciate it. You know, Michael Lombardi uh, is a great football mind. Yeah, and um, yeah, we're we're doing our thing. You know what? Probably uh, around like mid month, every month, we'll probably get Doc a new book for him to talk about on there. I kind of like that idea. You like that one, then? <laughs> okay, then. Well, let's just go through some of these other awards really quickly here. Um, the Walter Camp Award, which is a, a Player of the Year award, went to Kenneth Walker the third of Michigan State mm-hmm. coach of the year which I was really happy about went to Cincinnati's Luke Fickle I thought he did a really really good job yeah um obviously you know some of the other ones the best linebacker the Buckus award went to Nakobe Dean from Georgia uh, you know, obviously Georgia played some really really great football today led by Mr. Dean Mr. Dean uh, the best running back, the Duke Walker Award, went to Kenneth Walker the third uh, from Michigan State. How apropos! Uh, which is very, very apropos. Uh, best wide receiver went to Jordan Addison from mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, which is different. You don't usually hear about Pittsburgh wide receivers, um, but that's pretty awesome. John Mackey Award for best tight end um, is Trey McBride from Colorado State. Yep. Uh, so this is interesting, man. Um, I mean, it gives very, you a chance to see, you know, wide view how sports writers look at the entire college season outside of these top four teams for these awards. Yeah. Like it's a yeah. culmination of things. Yeah, because I didn't even know these, some of these existed, like top former walk on. Mm-hmm. Award, uh, Grant Morgan from Arkansas. Most inspirational, Trey Tipton from Pittsburgh, uh, which is a Disney Spirit Award. Uh, the Academic Heisman, William V. Campbell Trophy to Charlie Kohler from Iowa State. I didn't know there was a community service or a Best Assistant Coach Award. Yep. The Broyles Award and the Werfel Trophy for Community Service, Isaiah Sanders. Uh, Best Assistant Best assistant coach goes to Josh Gaddis, which I don't even know. Like, how do they even come up with this? Like, the person who recruits the most, like, how does this even work? That's um, a good question. I think we should do you know what I'm we get some like, research done on that. I think I will get some research done on that. Um, but uh, college football has been, you know, very interesting. Obviously, we had the coaching carousel not too long ago. Um, but with that, we had a lot of D1 
decommitments. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how college football shapes uh, next season. Um, I know Oregon finally hired their new coach um, after rumors that it could be Chip Kelly. I'm glad they didn't go that route. Um, They're moving on to Dan Lanning, um, who I thought they were doing somebody else, but I don't know. I thought they were choosing somebody else. But it is a defensive coordinator from Georgia um, who's getting the nod, um, which makes sense, you know, bringing defensive perspective. I don't think Oregon usually brings in defensive minded coaches. I think they always had offensive minded coaches. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so this it just so happens that they scored so frequently in the past, you right. know, in those Mariota years, that, you know, the defense, I mean, if you stop them, great, because you know that the other team has to throw the ball a lot. So, you know, you usually try to get some really good ball hawks. I mean, the question is, do the Georgia, you know, the Georgia recruits that went there for him, do they follow him? Um, I don't think so. For Oregon. I don't uh, think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> um, but, Johnny, I mean, the money is definitely there, so – see what happens we talked about yeah. that three years time we'll be talking about doc il idolo becoming an offensive coordinator at the college level i'm calling my shot right now he's calling his shot ladies and gentlemen but i know you heard this show on your favorite podcast platform but if you didn't you can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to review this episode as well as all the previous be sure to tune in manana as we go over those power rankings, as well as deliver the news, the analysis, and the reads. And don't forget to bring your booties because it's cold outside. Nick Saban signed Doc Elito.